Hi everybody, my name is Allison and today I'm gonna to be teaching you all about the mandolin. I'm gonna be showing you some tips, I'm gonna be showing you some tricks, I'm gonna show you cuts, and most of all you guys, I am gonna show you the safety features, which are actually my favorite part about the mandolin. So before we jump in, the reason why I like the training on the mandolin, you guys, is because I was so scared to use this. I was really nervous to take it out of the box and it actually sat in my cupboard for a long time because I heard all of these horror stories about mandolins and I even had one happen to myself. <laughs> Not a Tupperware one, um, but prior. So I was a little bit nervous. So today I am going to help you feel more confident taking your mandolin out of your cupboard and I'm going to show you how to use it so that you can show it off too. <laughs> Take it out of your cupboard, take it out of the box, and let's get started. If you're watching, what you can also do is if you have some potatoes near you and you have your mandolin, why not take it out and follow along with me so that you can learn what to do. So first you guys, the mandolin comes like this. So you're gonna get your mandolin, you are going to get your guard, your safety guard here, and the mandolin also comes with um, a sheet of exactly how to do all of the cuts so that there is no guesswork. So I like that, whoop, upside down. I like that there is step-by-step um, -step instructions of exactly what to do. And so first of all, I am going to go over um, some of the safety features and just some of the features on the mandolin to help you feel a little bit more comfortable using it. And so the number one thing, you guys, that I'm going to say right off the bat, the number one thing is hand on the red. If you keep your hand on the red, you're going to have no problems. This is called a guard because it's guarding your hand. So as long as you keep your hands on the red, you guys, you're golden. <laughs> You'll be absolutely golden. Um, so as you're watching, what I would love to know from you guys, have you used your mandolin yet? So comment below, have you used your mandolin? Is your mandolin still in your cupboard? Maybe you don't have a mandolin yet and you wanted to come and find out a little bit more. Let me know below, you guys. Okay, so also on the mandolin, um, underneath is where your blades are stored. So right here, there's a little storage pack. This is where your blades are stored. It comes with two different blades. And so it comes with a straight cut edge and it also comes with a crinkle cut edge. So you can do crinkle cut fries or waffle fries. Have you, do you guys remember waffle fries from when you were a kid? <laughs> I do. <laughs> so all Tupperware, you guys, is ionized steel, which means that when you cut these um, with Tupperware's blades, it is actually going to keep your food from browning. And so um, I'm not gonna get into all the science of it because I'm not a scientist, <laughs> but it is, they do keep your, the technology does keep your blades or your food from browning because of how the blades are made. So that's something that's really cool too. Okay, um, on the side, or it's super easy, you guys, pop down your handle just like that, and all you do is you pop in the blade. So you just line it up top, pop it in. All that you need to do to switch out your blade is put your hand on either side, there's like a little groove here, pop up and you can pop it in and out, switch out your blade. On when the blade or when the mandolin is in the lock position, so as you can see, whoop, not quite, the dial here is on the lock. This one is also on the lock. This means, you guys, that no blades are showing. So this is how I store it in my cupboard. No blades are showing. Not gonna cut your hands when you're reaching for it. Also on the back here, you guys, there is also um, little blades back here for when you are doing things like your hash browns or your fries. It, they are also covered at all times. So when you are storing it, you are absolutely not um, going to have any blades exposed. Tap tip, you guys, a really great tip. Get yourself a thermal brush. You can tell I might need a new one soon. Going on two years of this bad boy, almost three, almost three years of this bad boy. This is a really great way to clean your blades so that you're not actually touching it with a cloth to keep your hands safe. So just give this a good rinse. You can pop off this blade here and you can give it a rinse, give it a good scrub. The mandolin can also go in. So I would take your blade off, open the back cover and it can also go in the dishwasher. Trust me guys, I love anything that is dishwasher safe. Do you? <laughs> Hello, way easier. Okay, so on the side here, you have numerous, whoop, popped it out. 
numerous different cutting options. And so on the side, the numbers here are millimeters. So this is actually millimeters of how you want your um, food cut. And these, the other one, the other dial here is the spikes. I like to call them the police spikes because when you pop them up, <laughs> that's exactly what they look like. So I'll show you. So um, the two most popular numbers to cut on is six millimeters or nine. So let's just go ahead. So once you turn this, your blades are exposed and that's when you want your hand on the red at all times. So that, um, the blade just popped up and we are also going to turn up our police spikes. So these are also six and nine millimeters. Whoop! There we go. Those are your smaller fries right there, you guys. Here are your thicker cut fries, just like that. <laughs> okay, let's get into some cuts. Do you guys want to see some cuts? <laughs> I'm really excited um, because I did some earlier today for you guys just so you could take a look. So I did actually all of the cuts that are on this card, you guys. And so um, they're not that hard. They take a little bit of practice and that's okay. You can practice through it. You don't have to be an expert right away at all. <laughs> but once you give it a little bit of a go, they're really easy. And so there's exact instructions, you guys. And so you'll see that I like to say it out loud as I go. So let's learn the cuts. Let's get really, really simple first, you guys. Let's just do a slice. And so um, what I love, you guys, about the mandolin is it is so fast, so, so fast, you guys. Um, you don't have to stand there, chop, 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 and <laughs> your arms are not going to get sore. And the other reason that I like it is all the cuts are uniform, which means that when you cook it in your oven, in your MicroPro grill, everything is going to cook perfectly evenly because you're not going to have a bunch of chunks that are a different size. All right, let's get into it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. So I prefer you can hold the mandolin in a couple different ways. It can go sideways, depends if you like to go sideways. I like to, I like to actually slice forward. I find that it's easier to get the momentum. So what you want to start with is start with your guard. You take your potato or your apple or whatever you are slicing, hand on either side of the guard and all you si simply do is line up the middle with your whatever you're slicing and push down. Now that is going to put it right in the middle and it's gonna hold it in place. Hand on the red and the other hand is going to be back here on the handle. So you're gonna hold it on the handle so it's gonna keep it in place. There's also some rubber, some stickies on the bottom to keep it in place too. Like I said, hand on the guard. So when people start to slice, they have a tendency, you guys, to stop when they get to the blade. I say, act like you're going to the wall, <laughs> act like you're pushing it to the wall, and you are gonna have um, a much more successful slice because it's not gonna just stop and get stuck at the blade. So push towards the wall, push towards the wall, towards the wall, and you're gonna have no problem. And so just like that, you guys, we are gonna have even cuts every single time. So these are gonna be able to cook really easily because this is really great from like scalloped potatoes. Um, this is really great for doing just like your carrots. You can put a few chunks of carrots on here at a time and just slice those up. Really great for stews, yum, yum, yum. Okay, next we are going to do, let's get into the fries. So next I'm going to turn it up. I'm gonna turn up my police spikes here. There we go, my spike belt. And I am also going to start at the top and I'm going to push down towards the wall. So just push through the wall. And just like that, you guys, perfectly even cut fries. Isn't that so simple? You can have fresh fries without any preservatives right now, which is really exciting. And so a really great tip that I learned, you guys, is if you soak your if you soak your potatoes, like your hash browns or your fries, if they're homemade, for 15 to 30 minutes before you cook them in some water, some people like to put salt in there, some people like to put some sugar, and it pulls out the starch, they're gonna crisp up. So make sure that you soak them in water first, dry them off, and then um, cook them, and they're gonna crisp up real, real nicely. Let's do the hash browns. So let's take a look at our handy dandy guide. So the hash browns say, you guys, First, go um, up the mandolin with the spikes up, up the mandolin, turn 90 degrees, and then down. So let's do it. So up, turn, down. Up, turn, down. <laughs> I like to say it as 
I go because I find that it's easier. Oh, we got a little bit stuck. That's all right. And you guys, it's honestly that easy. Here are your hash browns. You guys, it's that simple. Like we've already done the fries. We've already done the fries, the hash browns, and so you can soak your hash browns, like I said. Um, and on the other cut on this one is the, oh, need a new potato. So hands on the side, hands on the side of the guard, push down in the middle. There we go, hand on the red for safety. Okay, so the next one is going to be the hash browns that are, they're kind of like diamonds. They're diamondy. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Okay, so let's look at this one. It is up 45 degrees down. So let's, you're going to hear me sing again. So up for 45, whoop, down through the wall, Allison. Up 45, down. Up 45, down. All right, let's check her out. And they're diamonds. Look at this, you guys. This is so exciting. Look at these little diamonds. Look at that. I get so excited about them. Look at this. You guys, it's honestly that simple. If you follow the directions, it's going to be that simple. So now let's get into, I'm just going to give it a quick clean up here. There we go. Quick clean. All right. So now let's get into the crinkle cut. So I'm going to turn down my spikes. So I'm going to put them back into the lock position there. And I am also going to take off my blades. So I'm just going to flip. So either hand on either side, pull up. So as you're watching, you guys, um, you may have seen in the description above what I would love for you to do while you're watching. I would love for you to tag your director. I would love for you to comment something that you have taken away during this and I would love for you to tag your director. So at any time you can do that or you can tag your team members. I would absolutely love for you to do that too. Um, it's super helpful because I want everybody to feel more confident when they get into the kitchen using their mandolin. So we're swapping it out for that waffle cut. Let's put it right on here. There we go. And so we're going to get into the... Woo -woo, we're gonna get into crinkle cuts. <laughs> so this one's really simple, you guys. So as you can see, it says you can put it to a one to nine. So that's on the millimeters. So we can decide how thick we want them. So I'm gonna do this on a six for you guys. There we go. Turn. And then all it is, there's one step and it is through. So like I said before, start at the top and make sure you don't just stop at the blade. Act like you're going through the wall. There we go, through the wall through. <laughs> whoop, we're going to need whoop, <laughs> a new potato. So just like that, you guys, crinkle. Look at that. Ooh, I'm so excited. That crinkle. That crinkle is so nice. Okay, let's get a new potato. Potato, hand on either side. Push down. It's in the guard. <laughs> okay, the next one is the waffle cut. Okay, so the key to the waffle cut that I have learned, you guys, is that if you want actual holes, so if you want to actually get those holes where you can see through, you got to go thin. Okay, you got to go really thin. So we're going to turn this millimeter dial down. We're going to turn it down to like a one here. Okay, <laughs> so it's going to be really thin if you actually want the physical holes. If you um, don't care if there's holes in them and you just want those waves, um, then it can be anywhere from a one to a three, a one to a three. Okay. So first, it says we are going to go down, and then we are going to go up, <laughs> and then we are going to turn it 90 degrees. There we go. Down, up, 90 degrees. So you guys, the key here is pushing hard when you come back up, so that when you come back up, push hard when you come back up so that it actually divots the bottom. So down, up, turn, down, up, turn. You guys, it's way easier if you say it when you do it. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. Woo, look at these bad boys. I'm so excited. Like these are pretty awesome. <laughs> so just the down, up, turn, you guys. Um, and so, yeah, this looks really good. I'm pretty excited. All right, so now let's do the next cut, you guys. Let's do the next one. Push these to the side. All right, so the next one is the, the next one is another crinkle cut, but it looks like it is like a crinkle cut 
to the max. Like that is like, this is pro crinkle cut. <laughs> this is like, if you really want to impress your guests, this is the one that you are going to make. Okay. So let's look at the instructions. We are going to go just like the other, the last one, we're going to go down. Then we're going to go up and we're going to go 45 degrees, which is that diamond. So let's do it, you guys. So we are going to go through the wall and then we're going to push hard back up and we're going to diamond down, hard back up and turn down, back up. And we're going to turn and let's check her out. Hey, look at that one, you guys. That's really good. So you're going to get that crisscross effect there. You can do this right at home, you guys. You can do this right at home in your kitchen. Isn't that crazy? So here's the difference. This one is a square. This one is um, that crisscross diamond. So you guys, that is pretty darn cool. What do you think? <laughs> do you think that you can do this? <laughs> I'm so excited to show you guys. Okay. So the last one that we're going to do is I'm going to do the crinkle cut fry so that you can impress your kids. <laughs> and like I said, it's going to be super simple. Let's make these a little bit thicker. Oh, that's real thick. Um, I'm going to turn this here to like a seven and then I'm going to up my spikes, up my spikes on here. And so the fries, you guys, are, oh, so we are going to go, oh, I'm losing my potato. Let's get a new potato for this. So down on the sides, push down on the sides and up. Okay, so we are going to go down. Woo, this one has one in the middle. So down 90 degrees. Well, that was only 45. Nope. It was 90. Oh, I don't, I lost my train of thought. Let's try again. So we are going to go down. We are going to turn and then we are going to keep going. So we are going to go down. We're gonna turn, whoop. <laughs> and we're gonna keep going. That's really funny, you guys. Um, oh, but it worked. See, we got crinkle cut fries, whoop. See, that's why it's so important to have the instructions beside you guys, because um, then you can refer back to it just like I just did. And so we got our crinkle cut fries, you guys, right on. Okay, so I'm actually going to make um, you guys, a little snack here. So I'm going to show you a little snack um, that I like to make for my son. It's really, really simple. There we go. All right. So I'm going to switch out this blade. There we go. So hand on other side, lift, and I'm going to put in the straight cut. I'm just going to give it a quick rinse here. Get some of that potato off. Just going to give this a quick little wipe here on the front. There we go. And I'm going to put down the spikes. We don't need any spikes for this snack. So I just have a apple here and I'm going to put the plate right underneath. So this is a really quick snack. You can trick your kids into thinking that it is a healthy, well, it is a healthy snack, but, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to about a two. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. I know that my son likes thinner slices. You take your apple, you guys, and the same as before, hand on either side and you're going to push down. All right, and then you are just going to, remember, hat through the wall. So make sure you're not stopping at the blade, you wanna go through the wall. So it's honestly this fast, you guys. It is that simple. Um, so when you're making scalloped potatoes, like that's it. <laughs> your scalloped potatoes now are gonna be so fast, you guys. All right, so then you just take your apples and you put them in like a circle or a square on your plate. Oh, he's gonna absolutely love this because they're really, really thin slices here. Then I'm just gonna add some cinnamon. If I was prepared, I could have like some chocolate and you could actually shave some chocolate on top. Ooh, that's quite a bit. Um, you could also sprinkle like some sugar. I think we might have some caramel sauce. So maybe I'll do some caramel sauce too. But honestly, you guys, it's that easy. You can tell them it's apple dessert <laughs> and maybe trick them into thinking so. So super simple, super easy. Oh, maybe I do have, let's see if I have the caramel. Ooh. Do I have it? I do. All right, here we go add some smokers. Why not? <laughs> Maybe this will just be for mom. All right. So you guys really easy snack, really good for, um, watching in front of the TV. Why not? Super simple. So before, um, before we started here, I also was making fries. 
So normally I would put on my oven mitts, but because these have been sitting for a while, um, this hasn't, this should, shouldn't be too hot. So what I did before you guys, ooh, look at those. I cut up, this is one potato and I cut it up and I just let it soak for um, about 15 minutes. Yeah, about 15 minutes while I was setting up for the live and I cooked these for my son. So all I did was throw them into the Micro Pro grill. This was a total of seven minutes. It depends on how hot your microwave is, how long you go. So I just would put them in for four minutes, give them a flip and then keep going. And all this has on it, you guys, is a little bit of seasoning salt. So you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I super, super appreciate it. I hope that you learned something tonight about our mandolin. I hope that you feel a little bit more confident taking it out of your cupboard and giving it a try. I hope that, whoop, I hope that you learned um, something new about the cuts or maybe you were nervous to try the waffle cut or the crinkle cut and that now you're going to go and give it a try. What I would absolutely love, love, love to hear from you guys, I would love to hear something that you learned during this video. So if you watched this video, thank you. I see that there's over a hundred of you on. Thank you so much. I would love for you to comment below something that you learned, something that you take took away um, and tag your director and make sure that you tag your team members as well because chances are if you learned something during this video that they are going to learn something as well. I hope that you all have a really great night and I'm going to go, well, I'm going to give my son some fries and some for me and I'm going to go enjoy my snack. <laughs> Bye everybody.